Blink-182 is widely recognized as the band responsible for the explosion of pop punk into the mainstream. But for someone as game-changing as these guys, they sure don't take themselves seriously. And yet, that may be one of the traits that broke them into the mainstream. Initially starting as a straightforward skate punk trio, Blink later introduced a version of punk rock that blended the genre's fast, aggressive sound with a pop polish. This triggered an entire generation of pop punk bands to emerge in the 2000s that dominated the airwaves, establishing the trio as one of the most influential bands of their time. So are Blink-182 the undisputed kings of pop punk? Keep watching as we follow the rise of this trio, from their humble roots to becoming the beloved, goofy megastars that inspired a huge wave of bands to follow in their footsteps, ushering in a new era for punk in the 2000s and beyond. Blink-182 emerged from Southern California's skate punk scene to eventually become one of the cornerstone bands of the pop punk genre that inspired countless copycats later on. Not that it's a bad thing, but whereas other artists were serious about their craft, Blink were anything but. If anything, they were a bunch of kids who enjoyed being wacky and joking around, and many people connected to their youthful energy, which largely contributed to their popularity. Blink formed in 1992 in San Diego, California. The original lineup consisted of Tom DeLonge on guitars and vocals, Scott Rayner on drums, and Mark Hoppus on bass. Tom and Mark bonded through their shared love of punk rock, particularly the punk band The Descendants. At the same time, Southern California had a punk subculture whose members were also into skating, surfing, and snowboarding. Compared to other punk scenes in the U.S., California's bands introduced a more melodic aspect to their brand of punk rock. Blink's first gig was at a high school during lunch break. Soon, the band quickly worked their way into the local scene playing more shows. They released a demo in 1994 called Buddha, which helped them get more exposure, and soon Cargo Records signed them. In 1995, the band released their debut album, Cheshire Cat. Its success helped Blink expand its audience outside San Diego's skate punk scene. The record led to the band's first music video for their single, M&M's, and it also led to a slight change in the band's name. At the time, the band was simply called Blink, which was the same name of a popular Irish band who threatened the trio with legal action. To save themselves from the hassle, the band added the number 182, because why not? And so moving forward, the band was known as Blink-182, although for simplicity's sake, they're still casually referred to as Blink. Still young, but with the passion and the album to show for it, the boys embarked on their first nationwide tour to promote the surfing video of the same name where the band is featured. The tour's success led to a leg in Australia, the band's first time overseas, where they were financially supported by fellow punk band Pennywise. They were also included in the 1996 edition of the Warp Tour. By 1996, the group was playing in places like Japan, Canada, and Australia. Not bad for a bunch of kids who were barely in their 20s. Backed by their new record label, MCA, Blink began working on their next album in late 1996. Dude Ranch hit record stores in June 1997 and was bolstered by the single Damn It, which received heavy radio airplay. The album was a hit and led to the band hitting the road again, but by this time, the exhausting touring schedule was beginning to take its toll on the group. Rayner turned to alcohol to deal with his personal issues and was fired by Tom and Mark. Travis Barker, who toured alongside Blink with the Aquabats, filled in as Blink's drummer for the band's remaining dates. Eventually, Travis joined the band on a full-time basis. After finishing their tour with their new drummer, the band proceeded to record their third album. For their next record, Blink worked with renowned punk producer Jerry Finn, who produced Green Day's seminal album Dookie. The result was 1999's Enema of the State, the album widely recognized for launching Blink-182 into superstardom. Its massive success turned Blink into one of the biggest rock bands by the turn of the millennium. To illustrate how big the band became, take note that this was a time when the charts were dominated by pop acts like the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and Britney Spears, and new metal bands like Korn and Limp Bizkit. Somewhere in that mix, Blink stood out as the only band of their kind. Their pop-infused punk style, lyrics that address typical teenage stuff, and crass humor proved too infectious to be denied, although it also attracted criticism. 
Punk fans accuse the band of making manufactured pop music masquerading as punk rock. Their music videos for What's My Age Again, which featured the band members running around naked and all the small things, where the boys parody music videos of the era's popular boy bands, caused the band to be labeled as a joke. Nonetheless, Blink were on cloud nine and enjoyed fame beyond their wildest dreams. They even had a cameo appearance in the hit comedy movie American Pie. They've created a pop-punk template that countless bands would copy in the coming years without even knowing it. After extensive touring to support the album, Blink regrouped for their fourth album, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, released in 2001. It was their first album that debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, and also the first punk album to do so. The record built on the success of its predecessor by retaining the pop-punk sound, but behind the scenes, creative differences between the members were beginning to emerge. This resulted in the members working in opposition to one another and even bred competition between Tom and Mark over who could write better songs. Mark later referred to the album as the permanent record of a band in transition. Our confused, contentious, brilliant, painful, cathartic leap into the unknown to satisfy his creative urges and get his mind off a chronic back pain that was bothering him, Tom formed the side project Boxcar Racer with Travis, which upset Mark. Meanwhile, Travis started to get into hip-hop and joined the rap rock band Transplants in 2002. In 2003, Blink released its self-titled fifth album. It was notable for being a departure from their original sound, being more experimental in its sound and more mature in its lyrics due to the members having become parents before writing the album. According to Mark, his lyrics on the album were his most personal at the time. Look no further than the most popular single from the album, I Miss You, as evidence of the band's changed sound. While the album was successful, fans were divided on the band's change in direction. Additionally, the tension in the band was reaching its climax, with Tom wanting to minimize touring to spend more time with his family. He asked for a year off, but Mark and Travis felt this was too long. They would always argue whenever they were in the same room, and the frequent communication breakdowns proved too much for the band, resulting in Blink-182 breaking up in 2005. Mark notes that they've grown apart at the time, with different priorities making it hard to continue as a unified group. Later that year, Tom launched his new band, Angels and Airwaves, while Mark and Travis formed the band Plus 44. Travis also starred in a reality TV show, Meet the Barkers, with his new wife at the time, Shayna Mokler. The drummer's continued productivity in music and increased presence on TV helped elevate his celebrity status. His eventual split with Mokler made the couple a favorite of the tabloids for a time. Despite the band's hiatus, it was around this time when their influence led to a new wave of pop-punk bands dominating the airwaves. The early to mid-2000s saw the rise of bands like Sum 41, Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, Paramore, and New Found Glory, who fused pop sensibilities with punk touches to create their own sound, much like Blink-182 before them. These were the most prominent bands in rock during the 2000s and formed the sound of a new generation. Going back to Blink, 2008 was pivotal for its three members. That year, their former producer Jerry Finn died. In August, Travis was involved in a plane crash that killed four people. He and his music collaborator Adam Goldstein were the only two survivors. Goldstein later died from a drug overdose. Travis sustained multiple injuries and severe burns and later suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder following the crash. Upon hearing the news, Mark took the latest flight to reach Travis in the hospital, while Tom mailed his former drummer a letter and a picture. The three eventually met in the hospital where Travis was being treated. They reconvened in Los Angeles in October of that year and started seriously discussing a possible reunion. At the Grammy Awards in February 2009, the band officially announced they were getting back together. After a reunion tour that ran from 2009 to 2010, Blink released its first album in eight years, Neighborhoods, in 2011. While expectations were high, the album underperformed in the charts. Their follow-up was delayed several times due to Tom's other non-musical engagements, making it hard for him to commit. In 2015, Mark and Travis decided to continue without Tom and hired Alkaline Trio's Matt Skiba to take his place. With Skiba on board, Blink released two albums, 2016's California, the band's second album to debut at number one on the Billboard 200, and 2019's Nine where the band experimented again with its signature pop-punk sound. 
In 2021, Mark revealed he had been battling cancer. After making his diagnosis public, he and Travis met again with Tom to address their issues from years past. Later that year, Mark announced he was cancer-free. The following year, speculation about Tom's possible return to the band was making the rounds. Clues such as Tom updating his Instagram bio to include Blink-182 and Skiba saying he was unsure of his future in the band fueled the rumors. In October 2022, the band officially announced Tom's return and released a new single titled Edging. Skiba exited the band gracefully and exchanged thanks with Tom for his time in the band. According to Tom, the reunited Blink-182's new album will be released in a few months. Blink-182 may have a history of numerous conflicts and personal challenges that its members had to overcome, but there's no doubt that they've carved a legacy as one of, if not the most influential pop-punk bands of all time. It's essentially impossible to hear a pop-punk band today that doesn't have Blink-182's fingerprint on it. And for that reason, for 30 years and counting, Blink-182 are still the undisputed kings of pop-punk.